Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Insomnia Success Videos. If you're watching this video then you too are probably suffering with an insomnia problem whether it's not being able to fall asleep, not being able to stay asleep, and not being able to wake up with a lot of energy in the morning. Today I want to talk to a lot of you about, about things that uh, may be affecting your ability to not stay asleep. So I have a lot of patients that come in that I consult with and their problem is, you know what, I can fall asleep okay, but I can't stay asleep. And so this is an important clue. And let me give you a little update. When we used to practice medicine, not me, but when, when doctors used to practice medicine in the early 1900s or eight, uh, you know 1950s, um, we weren't so driven by insurance. And insurance pays me less today than it did 10 years ago. Yet overhead goes up, staff goes up, everything goes up, and the doctor has less and less time to spend with you. So what happens is 10% of the time, they're actually doing a history. Whereas 80% of the time back in the day, they did a history. And the history can tell you a lot of important clues like, is it a problem more of staying asleep? Is it more of a problem of falling asleep? Is it a problem of waking up with no energy? Uh, tell me a little bit about that so I can put my thinking cap on and try to figure out what the main problem is. Um, so back in the day, it was 80% history, 10% testing, and 10% um, examination. Now it's 80% testing, 10% history, 10% examination. And you must feel like a number where the doctor just kind of wants to get you in and out and got to see the next person after the next person. And at the end of the day, they're just going to write you a prescription for your sleeping aid. And if that makes sense, then that's why that is happening. But when I have a patient who is unable to stay asleep, then the first thing that I think about is stomach gastrointestinal problems. And this word that you've never heard of before, hypochloridria, I can't tell you how often I see patients that are over the age of 30 that have a chronic problem like insomnia that have hypochloridria. And what that basically means is you, these people are unable to secrete enough stomach acid and stomach juices to break down their foods. And so what happens is those foods, like the stomach acid, should you know, dissolve all that food and make it into tiny little particles so that we can absorb it. That is missing. And so that food just sort of sits there undigested and it ferments and it causes that reflux of pain. And then typically the pharmaceutical industry is going to sell you these antacids. And really what's happening is that you don't have too much stomach acid. You have too little stomach acid. And the burning feeling that you get is from the fermentation and sort of the upregulation of lactic acid into your esophagus. And we're even crushing the acid even more by giving you antacids. It just makes me crazy. But anyways, how does this relate to not being able to sleep? What happens is that food just sits there undigested. So number one, you're not getting the nutrients and the vitamins and the absorption of foods for these cells to do their activity, to produce hormones, to make energy, for allowing you to sleep. And number two, what's happening is there's so much inflammation, and we've talked about inflammation before, where inflammation is like taking a blowtorch to all your cells, and they're not going to function properly. Namely, you're not going to sleep. So some of the things we look at on your blood tests are your globulin levels, or your total protein levels, or even your mineral levels, or even some of your red blood cell levels, because that will give me an idea as to how well your digestion and your secreting stomach acids. Other things I see are people that have pernicious anemias, they have autoimmunities that don't allow them to absorb foods. There's a huge list of things that can go on as to why you're not secreting enough stomach acid. And then ultimately, this can cause a whole host of other problems like food sensitivities, which we'll talk about on another video. So hopefully this makes a lot of sense to you. You say, yeah, you know, I actually do have a little bit of stomach problems. I don't tolerate certain foods or I have a little bit of bloating and gas and constipation or diarrhea or a little bit of both. And I didn't really think that that was related to my um, inability to sleep. And it is. And so we take a functional medicine approach as to what we're going to do and what plan we're going to make to get the, to the bottom of, of, your, of your mystery of why you're not able to sleep and, and basically do things naturally. So hopefully this made a lot of sense to you in this installment. And I look forward to helping you in your insomnia recovery as well. Thank you so much.